okay guys so today these are the topics if you will see in my screen we will go we, i will start with the introduction of steven and how cisco webtella merged with basically and cisco and how cisco and webtella merged and they have basically created one sdvan solution we will discuss the traditional router architecture and what are the different planes we are having on the, this particular traditional router then we will discuss the sdvan component where we will discuss we manage controller we smart controller we want controller we will discuss the data plane as well where we will discuss we is routers and c is routers and after that we will see what are how we can host or where we can deploy these particular controllers right then we will we will i will also explain you the overlay network and your underlay network what's that and after that we will also see what is your programmatic apis which is also supported by your sdvan solution or what is your v analytics right so we will see these are the 12 topics which i am going to cover in your today's session guys now so what i will do i will basically start the thing i will start explaining from your router and its different planes in networking okay so if you will see here i have write down few i have written here basically i have taken few images guys i am not looking on a chat right now so i will take your questions after the class let me just go with the flow okay so if you will see guys these are the cisco routers okay now in these routers basically what we have let's suppose these are the two routers so let me just go like that this is one router and this is second router both the routers they have a connectivity so let's so this data interface is connected by this particular router data interface directly let's so this is f0 by 0 interface and here also let's suppose so you are having f0 by 0 interface here you have ip address 10.1.1.1 and here you have ip address 10.1.1.2 apart from that let's suppose you do have a this particular interface let's suppose this is your console port you do have a this particular interface as well let's suppose this is your management port of your router on this management port let's suppose you have enabled shs and telnet means you can able to do the telnet and you can able to do the shs on this particular router now let's suppose what is the requirement here what i want let's suppose i wants to configure the these particular ip address on this router and i want to configure this ip address on this router and after that i wants to enable the ospf what i want to enable the ospf basically and let's take an example i do have one pc here which is connected with one of the port here and i do have one more pc here let's so connected with this port this is pc2 this is pc1 now this pc is on your 10.10.10.0/24 slash network and this pc is on 10.10.20.0/24 slash network here we have ip address 1.1 1, one, and let's suppose on this enter we have ip address dot 2 and here also dot 2 let's so this f0/1 and this is also f0/1 simple design guys we have a two routers these two routers have a direct connection and we want to configure the ospf now now if you want to configure the ospf what you will do what is the first touch you will basically log in on this router what you will do for login purpose either you will use telnet either you will do the shs either you will basically connect the console cable so these are the options you are having right after lo successful login on this router basically what you will do you will basically start configuration right so you will run these commands like interface f0 by 0 right you will put here ip address 10.1.1.1 slash 24 right then you will put here no cert so like that you will start the configuration in similar way you will also 
configure you another interface which is f0 y1 where you will configure the ip which is 10.10.10. maybe 2 slash 24 and after that you will basically run the routing protocol so you will type here router ospf maybe 100 then after that you will put here network then you will define the network, then you will define the area, all these things you have to do. Okay, cool. So let's suppose you have done this, this configuration on this router. Let's say so this is R1 and you did the configuration on this router, which is R2. So guys, when you are doing any kind of configuration while logging into this particular router, when you will take the telnet, SHS or console, which means what you will do, you are accessing the management plane of your router. What? You are accessing the management plane of your router. Now, when you will run this particular OSPF, right? You will run the OSPF on R1 and you will run the OSPF on R2. So what they will do? Now they will start the OSPF negotiation. Now they will basically send some OSPF messages here and there and they will advertise their routes and everything, right? With each other. So what they will do now? So this particular traffic of your OSPF, it is basically handled by the control plane. This traffic is handled by the control plane. And in your router, to handle the control plane traffic, we have a something called route processor. What? We have a route processor, which is also known as RP. What this route processor used to do? It used to basically so when this router, he will advertise these partic this particular subnet towards R1, what, what it will send? It will send in a SLA, SLA, right? Now, these particular SLA is processed by the route processor and what it will, it will basically maintain your SLA database. Or I can say it will maintain your routing information base in case of eigrp what it will basically maintain your topology table all such kind of calculation it will do right when he receive these sla it will start it will run the S spf algorithm right so test path first spf algorithm it will run right it will try to get the best path right all these things this particular router will do and all these tasks is done by the control plane let's suppose you are using authentication for your osp then all these authentication will also take care by your control plane of your router and after that from this routing information base basically what your what your router will will build it will build your forwarding information base which is also known as your routing table the active routing table and your safe table these tables it will build because if this pc pc1 wants to send any data to pc2 what will happen that pc will forward the traffic here now this traffic basically received on f0 y one interface and after that your packet is checked against the routing table, right? It will check for this destination 10.10.20.1 where it is. So that information he will get from your FIP table or your SEF table guys. And now because your routing table or SEF table is basically we are using for forwarding the actual data of your users, which means this is the data plane basically of your router. So in your router, how many planes we are having? We have a management plane, we have a control plane, and we have a data plane, guys. Now, if I will explain you the advanced architecture of these particular routers, so let me just show you here. If you will see these ports basically, 
these ports is your part of your data plane just remember and all these ports basically they have connected internally maybe here they have connected internally something called we have a one thing which is known as switch fabric what all these data ports they have a connectivity with the through your switch fabric with the route processor or your control plane of your router so your all your protocol processing everything is done by the control plane or we can say your route processor let's suppose when we receive the lsa in case of ospf or when we receive the topology information in case of your eigrp all these type of database all the calculation your all the algorithm your control plane will run basically and what it will do after running these algorithm it will give that information to your data plane in a form of your fib table forwarding information base or in a form of your routing table and from this routing table what they will build the ceph table so they will use your routing table and ceph table for the for transferring the data or basically it will handle your user's data so in your router just remember guys we have a three planes we have a management plane we have a data plane and we have a control plane guys if let's see if i show you one more diagram here so these are the some internal component of your control plane guys where you have a cpu right and this these are this is your switch fabric guys and this is comes under your data plane basically okay i am not going in in depth basically of that architecture if you want to see the forwarding how they will do the forwarding they will basically get the routing information and everything from here right and after that they will do the data forwarding basically that's how they have a connectivity with each other so you can see forwarding plane is it is your data plane and this is your control plane basically and if you want to see the architecture of your route processor then route processor architecture looks like this route processor where you have a multi core cpu you have a memory as well and guys just remember one thing in your palo alto device sorry in your routers basically they have a all these shared memory so they will share your your cpu resources and your memory resources with the control plane and data plane they don't have a dedicated resources basically just remember okay they don't have a dedicated resources now so this is the architecture of your routers and it has just a three plane now let me just explain you in a very very small diagram because maybe it looks like a complex for you so let's suppose i have here router r1 i have here router r2 i have here router r3 this is the setup right now i am having i have a connectivity of these three routers like this f0 by 0 f0 by 0 here f0 by 1 and f0 by 0 here let's suppose here i am using 10.1.1.0/24 series and here i am using 10.1.2.0/24 series ip address is dot .1 here dot .2 here dot .1 here and dot .2 here and i have this particular pc here pc1 and i have this particular pc to here this is f0 by 1 and this is f0 by 1 here let's say i'm using 10.10.10.0/24 network ip is 1 and 2 here here let's say i'm using 10.10.20.0/24 now and here i have dot 1 and here i have dot 2 now if you will basically see on this interface basically 
or let's take example of this interface if this router let's suppose wants to update any type any type of routing information and let's suppose we are running ospf here we are running ospf here as well so which means on this particular port f0 by 0 what type of packet we will receive what type of packet generally we will receive on this particular port right either we can receive a routing packets or either we can receive a routed packet guys anyone know what is the difference between routing packets and routed packets if you know you can write on a chat So what is what is basically routing packets, guys? Okay, I got lots of good answer from Deepak, from Suraj, from Sajid. Okay, guys, I think you know. Cool. Now let me just tell you here. So your routing packets basically what? they will include the traffic this routing packets they will let's suppose when this router r3 he will update this particular network 10.10.20.0 information to r2 and after that this r2 he wants to up further update the information to r1 regarding this this particular prefix and when you receive such kind of packets these packets is known as a routing packet so if i'll say your ospf packets your eigrp packets i'm not writing like what are the packets they will send your bgp packets your hsrp vrrp packets basically all these packets they basically are known as routing packets and your routing packets is always handled by the control plane guys in control plane which component is handle the component is is your route position what component name is route processor so basically your routing packets are the routes updates from the protocols basically what is routed packet let's suppose this pc he has sent one packet he has initiated ping to 10.10.10.2 which means now this ping will reaches to r3 then r3 forward to r2 then r2 will forward to r1 now when r1 received this request on this interface this packet is known as routed packet and your routed packet is handled by the data plane now in your data plane what we have a majorly two things we have a routing table which is also known as your forwarding information base which is fib table and we have a ceph table guys so all these management of your routing table and your ceph table forwarding of your of your routed packets is a task of your data plane and your control plane what it will do it will basically responsible for managing the routing updates basically it will handle all your routing packets okay now if i'll say one more thing let me just give you one example let's suppose i'm having here one snmp server this is my snmp server and i have a somehow connectivity of this SNM snmp server with this router now if as this snmp server wants to pull any information from this router which kind which basically plane of that router will basically handle this particular request which plane of this router will handle this request guys can you just write on a chat that's great guys i'm getting lots of good answer varun so you're wrong it will not handle by the control plane it will handle your management plane guys so majorly your snmp your telnet your shs your http 
your HTTP is all these particular requests is handled by this particular management plane of your network. Okay, cool. So I think this is clear, guys. What is what is the management plane of your router? What is the data plane of your router? Or what is the control plane of your router? Ev I think this thing is clear to everybody, guys. I hope this is clear to everyone, guys. Write on a chat. Okay. Cool. So now what we will do now, let's discuss the same thing with regards to you. Or let me just tell you one more thing here, basically, because see, in your control plane, basically, if I tell you your packets, which is your, if I'll take example of your STP packets, your ARP packet, your RIP protocol packet, your OSPA packet, your DSCP packet, your EIGRP packet, your BGP packet, all these type of packet is always processed by the route processor in your, basically in your router, just remember. Now, let me just give you the same thing with regards to the ST van now. So let's suppose guys, we have a management plane here. We have a control plane here and we have a data plane here. Now, let's suppose I'm just taking some hypothetical number guys. Okay, let's suppose on this router, I'm having total. Let's say I'm having around 40 core of CPUs on this particular R1 router. And I'm having, let's suppose around 16 GB of RAM. These are the typical resources I'm having in this particular R1 router. So let's suppose out of these 48 cores, let's suppose around eight core of your CPU is utilized by the management plane traffic. And let's suppose it is also utilizing around four GB of your RAM. Now your control plane, let's suppose around 20 CPU or 20 core of your CPU is utilized by the control plane. And because it will process your control information, which means it needs RAM as well. So let's suppose around six GB RAM is utilized by the control plane of your router. And now we have a data plane here. Let's suppose remaining around 20 core of your CPU, we are having for data plane and we are having around 6 GB of RAM for your data plane, right? So if you will see guys, in this example, around your 50% resources are utilized by the management plane and your control plane, right? And remaining 50% resources of your router is basically utilized for by the data plane. Now guys, let's suppose you have here so many users. You have lots of users here and all these users, they are communicating with servers here. Maybe you are having here servers, which means for handling the actual traffic, because guys, this is your business traffic, right? If these people, they will communicate with these server, which means it will basically generate some revenue to your organization. And for that, you will see, we, you just have a 50% of resources. So, which means let's suppose if you have around 2000 routers, I'm talking about the WAN routers, guys. Okay, do not confused here. Let's suppose you have around 2000 routers, which means around 100 routers performance. I'm talking about on the numbers, 100 or 1000 routers performance 
you just need for management plane and just for the control plane traffic right now let's consider so guys what sd wan has offered what they have done let's suppose what we can do if we can remove the management plane from this router or we can remove the control plane from this particular router which means if we remove the control plane and management plane from this router which means now whatever resources we are having on this router all resources we can utilize for the data plane right so whatever resources we are having these resources we can all we can utilize for your data plane traffic so guys the major idea of your sd wan solution is that what sd wan has done what they have created some centralized solution basically what they have created the centralized management they have created some centralized management means they have removed the management plane for from these routers let's suppose you have a lots of router they have removed the management plane from these routers and they have put let's suppose into this device that device is called according to the sd wan solution is known as v managed device sd wan has also removed the control plane functionalities and they have basically let's suppose they have put here where there is a new new component of your sd wan is your v smart they have removed the management plane and control plane and all these routers they have a connectivity with these particular controllers which means now because now they have separated the management plane of your device and the con or and your control plane of your device for control plane we ha they have introduced the v smart and for management plane they have they have basically introduced the v manage this will handle your management plane now they have a connectivity which means all type of management if you want to configure let's suppose ospf between these routers or you want to configure the ip address like these things you can able to do it from here now you don't need to can connect with the console cable you don't need to do the telnet or sshs nothing you don't need to log in into all the devices if you want even though you can able to configure all the devices at the same time from this particular manager which means we have basically created a dedicated management plane on one device and who will basically take care of all the all the management plane related activities of all these device here i have three let's say you have a thousand or you have a two thousand or four thousand or six thousand doesn't matter it can able to handle up to twelve thousand devices in your fabric guys which means it can able to process the twelve thousand devices it can able to manage the twelve thousand devices in your sd1 fabric and we have introduced the v smart device here what it will do now let's take an example guys see previously what they are they are doing they are sending the ospf lsa updates with each other right but what they have done they have introduced one more device which is which is known as v smart all the routes let's suppose this particular r1 router he is having these two subnets what he will do he will basically send these routing information to be smart this router he will also send the routing information to be smart this router will also send the routing information to be smart let's suppose you have here 10000 routers all these 10000 routers they will sends the routing information to be smart 
now all the calculation basically it will run the your algorithms basically whatever as whatever algorithm is used by the osp like sort as pass for disk castra all these kind of routing algorithm is run by this particular device which is v smart device now we will get rid of this control plane things as well from these routers and what it will do it will basically like this control plane what he used to provide the routing table or i can say your forwarding information base right fifth table to the data plane this v smart device will also do after generating the fib information it will basically advertise the routing information towards these devices so all the control plane activities now is done by this particular device so guys this is the we can say this is how your sd wan technology evolved basically this is how your sd wan technology evolved they have think for this solution because guys see i am if i'll say the very very complex environment here we just have a very small environment right maybe if i'll take example very complex environment where you are receiving here 10000 routes or maybe you are receiving here 1 lakh of routes which means now it's become very very hard for this router your control plane needs to do lots of calculations and all right so for these type of calculation now we have dedicated put one basically device who will do all of them for us which is known as v smart guys so this is your this is how so i if i say your management plane of your router is replaced by the v manage controller of your sd wan control plane of your router is replaced by the v smart basically and your data plane is only available on these particular routers only they have a data plane basically so all the resources because they are having these shared resources they can utilize these resources for processing the users request this is the one benefit you will get apart from that there is a one more benefit you will get guys let's suppose in the same design we have here v smart i am just writing here v smart guys and now let me just introduce few more routers i have here this is my internet fabric let's suppose and here i have few more routers maybe r4 i have here r5 and let's suppose i am having here r6 behind these routers i am running some lan network maybe lan 1 here i am having lan 2 and i am having here lan 3 now these routers they also have a connectivity like this let's suppose now let's take an example here let's suppose in this situation let's suppose if these people who is sitting behind these lens if they wants to communicate securely let's suppose with this pc or with this pc over the internet what will happen what was the solution offered by the wan technology we can go with the dmvpn here now guys see the things in dmvpn as i have also discussed yesterday they have to go through with the phase one exchange and your phase two exchange of your ipsec vpn right they have to go through with the phase one and phase two exchange process all these routers let's suppose now if you have a 10000 router or let's suppose a 1000 router which means this r1 router needs to maintain the 1000 ip sectors if you have a, a dual isp in that case this router needs to maintain the 2000 ip sectors which means when they will do the exchange of phase 1 and phase 2 these particular thing so you in your phase 1 and phase 2 exchange in your router there is a one process called crypto process 
what this crypto process this crypto process basically do the calculation of your keys which is known as defi hellman keys right if you are aware about the bpn then they have to do the calculation for s key id the session keys and all right if somebody has joined attended my bpn classes there i have to explain all these details and all these thing in a detail like s key id d then they have created s key id a then they have created s key id e right lots of calculation they have to do after that they will start the phase two action where they will do the again do the same type of calculations right and finally they what they have generated the encryption key and they have generated the hashing key right this is the final and these two keys they will use for encrypting the data which is flowing between this pc and this pc now guys your phase one and phase two exchange is also removed with the help of dmbp and what they have said they just said you don't need to do any type of phase one and phase two exchange you can directly share the key with v smart you can directly share this encryption key and hashing key directly with v smart so all these devices they will send the key with this particular v smart and we smart update regarding the keys to the other peer so they are directly getting these keys now so this particular challenge is also taking care by the sdwn solution you don't need to do single configuration for bpn because your ipsec is by default enabled in your sdwn technology it is by default enabled guys so you don't need to do single line configuration for that so this is how basically your sdwn evaluation happens cool now let me just explain you the high level overview of this particular picture now let me just tell you the sdwn components i have already explained here but let me just go through with this picture here let me just increase this decrease the size to i hope guys this particular image is visible properly just say yes or no on the chat i'll take your questions guys after the session okay cool everyone able to read the things right oh okay get i got the for lots of yes which means everyone able to see it now if you will see in this particular picture so your management plane is your v manage this is the one of the controller of your sdwn which is v manage controller who will take care of the management activities guys we have here v smart this v smart controller will take care of the control plane activities guys i will not touch b analytics for now guys now this v manage is provide you the graphical user interface for doing any kind of configuration even though you can also do the automation it will take the python you can do the python automation python scripting if you are good you can do the automation using python if you have any kind of third party tools you can also use these tools for doing the automation you can automate lots of activities of your v manage so we have a v manage we have a which is take care of your management plane we have a control plane which is take care by the v smart controllers and we have a data plane which is basically where we you have a actual your branches your campus your data center and your cloud as routers basically these are the v as routers these routers will basically process your actual data these controllers you can put anywhere maybe the best way you can put on the cloud you can put these control on the cloud these are the actual devices who will basically handle the traffic and if you will see here these are the transport guys these are your band technology mpls internet 4g and 5g guys and all these all these particular as routers 
network, they will basically create a control connection with vManage, with vSmart, with vWand. So guys, I will come into this vWand in a while. So vWand is known as a orchestration plane basically, or I can say in simple word, it is a authenticator. It is an authenticator or validator. What it will, it will validate this particular router belongs to your organization or not. It will just barely do the validation of these routers is belongs to your organization or not. Okay, so these are the generally high level overview. So we have a management. So guys, now in SD WAN, if I'll discuss in your SD WAN, how many planes we are having. So we have a management plane, we have a control plane, we have a data plane, and we have a orchestration plane. So in your SD WAN, it has introduced majorly four planes basically. Now we will discuss one by one what are these devices, how we can use them all these things we will discuss and these are the guys building blocks or these are the main sd one components if you know these components you are good with the sd one technology guys now i do have one more picture here same picture we have a v wand which is your orchestration plane we have your v manager which is your management plane we have a control plane these are your vSmart. These are your transport guys. So if somebody has, what is transport? You can say transport is the WAN network basically. So we have internet as a, we can use internet as a transport, MPLS as a transport, 4G as a transport basically. We have your WAN as routers. They are available at your data center, campus, branches, home networks and all guys. This is your data plane. Here we have a physical devices or virtual devices. Now just remember one more thing, guys. All your controllers, which is your vWand, your vManager and vSmart, all these are the virtual appliances. They are the virtual appliances. We don't have any kind of physical device for them. These are the virtual appliances, basically. Just remember, they are the virtual appliances. Now. I'll move into my topology. So guys, if you see in my topology, this is the second topology of my lab, guys. This is for doing some advanced practicals. If you will see here, I am I have around three V manager who will take care of the management plane of these particular WAN is devices. So these are the WAN is routers, basically. So these routers management plane activities is take care by this one this is your v smart controllers i have a three v smart controllers what they will do they will take care of the control plane of these particular awareness devices and these are the v ones. so i have here three v one on my topology for the redundancy purpose okay so generally this topology i have designed for doing your t lock extension lab your vrrp lab your service chaining lab so that's why i have put here firewall device right and i can i have put here multiple controllers for doing your redundancy related labs basically okay cool now let me go here let's move towards the next thing which is now let's basically discuss what is we want controller basically what is your V1 controller? So let me just decrease the size of this image a little bit because size is increased a lot. Cool. I hope guys, my screen is visible to everyone properly. Just say yes. Okay, I got lots of yes which means we are good to go. Okay, cool. So 
we have discussed what is the traditional router all these things i have written the theory information as well here guys so if you want to refer later you can able to refer it oh, cool now sd wan component so your cisco biptela sd wan solution is made up of four segregated planes basically first plane is known as your orchestration plane and in orchestration plane we have a one device is known as v wand we have a management plane in management plane we have a v manage controllers then we have a control plane where we have a v smart controller and we have a data plane where we have a wan v is devices guys and your c is devices if you will see v is device which means they are the vip tela guys v is it's not virtual edge it's a vip tela edge devices guys these are the vip tela routers we can say if you will see c is which means these are the cisco routers basically who supports the sd wan functionality these are the cisco router c means cisco v men vip tela guys and also if you will see this v here in v men they are it's v not not related to your virtual it's a vip tela managed controller vip tela smart controller vip tela bond controller okay it's a v bond controller so it is stand for vip tela guys this v is stand for vip tela do not confuse with that now so if i'll discuss the what your v manage controller will do it will basically take care of the management plane what it manage all the wan as devices or we manage all the wan as devices from this v manager which means what type of management we have to do so let me go back here so i will start with the management plane first and we won't plane i will discuss later guys so what it will do your v manager it will provide you the single pane of glass for managing your day 0 day 1 day 2 operations which means what it will do this is the single pane of glass from where we can do the management what type of management we can do so your management includes let's suppose on this particular v manager you wants to configure the ip address on these interfaces let's suppose you wants to can enable the ospf routing protocol here you want to enable any type of protocol here all these thing basically we will do from the v manage controller basically and it it is just a single pane of glass for management purpose even though you don't need to log in into this device guys if your device is join the fabric if this device is is a part of your fabric which means now if you want you can do the shs as well on this device from here you can check the health of this particular device from v manage dashboard it will provide you the dashboard basically or the graphical user interface where all the network engineers they will interact on the daily basis for doing their daily basis changes if you want to do some kind of troubleshooting as well on this device you can able to do it from here if you want to see what is the jitter on this interface what is the packet count on this inter what is the top application what is the top talkers or top traffic is going through this interface you can able to see everything from here so such kind of management you will get through this particular v manager controller guys it's a single pane of glass now just see the traditional architecture guys in traditional if you want to manage anything here you have to check the things on each and every routers right but with the help of this you can check everything if there is any problem with any of the transport like if your any of the isp is not working behaving well you can able to also check these things basically through this particular we may if you let suppose this particular router is not able to communicate with this router what in the traditionally what you have to do you will you have to log in into this router 
then you have to initiate a ping right but this time you can able to do the same thing from here you can able to generate the traffic you can able to generate the traffic from here and you can check the connectivity which connectivity is, is your traffic going through mpls or is your traffic going through internet as your traffic is going through both the links you can able to see both the things guys so such kind of management capabilities you will get apart from this you will get the configuration capabilities whatever configuration you want to do in this device you can do it if you want to let's suppose let me just give you one simple example let's suppose you have introduced one new snmp server in your environment now you have to add the details of this snmp server you have to configure this snmp server into all your wan devices let's suppose you have 10000 devices what do you have to do if you will do these jobs manually what do you have to do you have to log in into each and every device and you have to do it maybe it will take around five to six days to complete this particular task but with the help of this v manager you can able to achieve just in two minutes let's suppose you want to upgrade your 10,000 when as routers with the new patch let's suppose you have received there is a new patch where some type of bug you are facing into your devices now that bug fix is there on this patch if you will basically install this patch manually on all these devices it's become a tedious task but with the help of v manager controller you can do it in just a one click so such kind of management capabilities you will get by using the v manage device basically how they how v manage do the configuration so your v manage it will use the protocol is known as netconf it will use this netconf protocol for pushing the configuration into all your van edge devices how this netconf works and everything we will discuss in some other class guys how these people basically they will sense the health of these devices how my vman is able to see everything because what it will do it will use the snmp protocol we can basically what it will fetch the health of these devices your interface health and everything with the help of snmp polling we can also able to shs on any of devices because shs service is there with the help of SHS, we can SHS from V manage into all these devices, right? So these are the main management protocol, which is basically having, which is used by the V manager to basically manage your Venice devices. Cool. Now, let me come here. Centralized provisioning, which means let's suppose you now you can do the provision of all your Venice devices from one location. Let's so these are the when devices you are having. These are your when routers. You can able to provision all the configuration, everything from just one device. So you will get the centralized provisioning option as well. Your V manage is available on a multi-tenant mode or single tenant mode guys what is what do you understand with the multi tenant and single tenant guys anyone know can you write on a chat if you know what is multi tenant what is single tenant okay cool not an issue let me just tell you so let's suppose If you want to basically deploy this particular V manager, what options you are having? Either you can deploy in your on prem network. In your on prem network, when you deploy this particular V manager, which means you will deploy either on EXI environment, on over the EXI server, or either you will deploy on your KBM server, like you are having Red Hat OpenStack you can able to deploy for exi deployment you have to download the ova image 
of your vmanage from the cisco cisco download portal and for kbm you have to download the qcow to image now when you deploy this particular device on prem in your environment which means this is the single tenant basically if you have any type of public cloud let's say you are using aws you are using azure you are using gcp so if you are deploying your vmand is into these cloud platform these public cloud platform this is also a single tenant deployment because single tenant means this particular v manager is only dedicated for your organization let's suppose you are for abc.com which means this particular v manager is only for abc.com now there is a one more option you can opt from cisco what you can you can take the service from cisco which means you can deploy your controllers on cisco environment as well on cisco cloud guys which means now if you will deploy the deploy your v manager on cisco cloud that time cisco have offers two solution single tenant or a multi tenant which means multi tenant means let's suppose you just have around 10 devices very small or network right in that case why you will basically go with the single tenant because single tenant if you will go you have to pay some cost but you can get the multi tenant which means this particular we manage is shared by multiple companies but so it, it's a simple thing right in your router when we used to create the vrfs right so we are dividing one physical hardware into multiple logical routers like in your palo alto we used to create a virtual systems so we are and in your cisco we can able to create the context right which means multi, one physical box we will basically divide into multiple logical boxes like c1 c2 c3 and we can allocate these context to the oh, different different company this is known as a multi tenant so cisco has offered both things single tenant or multi tenant if you have a lots of sites if you have a very big organized big network you can go with the single tenant guys and around 90% customers basically they will opt this particular service if i'll say the deployment option of your sdbn controllers everyone go with the cisco cloud only in a back end guys cisco have uses the aws environment but the management of these controllers is now cisco headache if you wants to basically increase the resources let's suppose you have a thousand sites right now now you have decided to open 200 more sites which means now your device count will increase if your device count will increase which means now you need more resources on your v manage so if you want to scale the resources that's why always recommended do not go with the on prem deployment guys either you can go with the public cloud deployment either you can use the cisco cloud deployment basically and 90% customers they are using the cisco cloud guys for we manage or for your sd wan controllers okay cool now so from this v manager it is also used for your sending the policies and your templates templates is your configuration scripts basically it templates includes the configuration scripts you can able to do the troubleshooting and monitoring you can able to monitor the entire fabric from this particular single device basically you can do the software upgrades you can also get the gui of this particular device so you can able to it will provide you two things either you can access it by a graphical user interface if you want you can also able to access by a c like both options will be there if you are good with the programming then you can also do the things with the help of rest apis so three interfaces it will provide to the netbook admins basically programming interface will support rest apis and your netconf apis it is highly resilience resilience means what we have to do somebody have also asked on a chat why we have a multiple 
we manager on my top lossy because guys see we are managing entire infrastructure from this particular single device if this one device goes down due to any reason what will happen in that case i will lose the management capabilities of my entire sd1 fabric or my entire van management is disconnected now so that's why always recommended you can go back at least two or three basically v manager so if one v manager goes down you have a, another one who can basically take care of the things at that time so we will always deploy these devices on a ha or ha is not a good word here i can say in a cluster and this supports active active type of cluster guys okay so that's why i'm having here so highly resilient means we have to deploy these control in such a way so they are always available guys cool these are the main characteristics of your v manage now let's go here cisco v manage is the management plane of your sd1 system it runs the user interface of the system and it is the dashboard and we it will also provide you the dashboard where user or administrator interacts on the daily basis it is also used to create device templates which is your configuration like you want to con you want to enable ospf you want to configure static route you want to configure vanner all type of configuration you have to do it with the help of template this is the cli scripts guys it will push the configuration it will also perform the overlay traffic engineer which means if you want to do the traffic engineers what type of traffic engineers you can do it let's suppose in this diagram i have these two networks right what i want if my traffic from this router is wants to go to this london router what it will do it will always go through the mpls link it will always follow this particular path and i have another requirement if my traffic initiated by this router to but this router it will always go through the internet then it will follow this path such kind of traffic engineering you can achieve from the v manager so all these configuration you have to do from the v manager device let's say you have a requirement if these people's they wants to go to the internet which means all this traffic will go to your internet cloud then it will go to your head office network here your scrubbing will happen then your traffic go towards the internet so if you want to achieve such kind of traffic engineer me you want to you want to just define the path for your traffic in that case also you have to all this configuration we will do from the v manager controller guys this part we have already discussed it's a single pane of glass for managing whole when infrastructure centralized provisioning of the when edges centralized template management and centralized policy management guys your policies be used for the traffic engineers and your templates be used for configuring your routing protocols your vanner all these details it will also provide you the one centralized dashboard for the troubleshooting centralized dashboard for monitoring we can take the shs shs access of any vanish from the vmanage we don't need to log in separately centralized software upgrade and downgrade it provides the programming interface using api and netcom so we can automate using the python scripts at that it provides graphical user interface and cli access as well now guys see this we can manage around 2000 vanish devices using just one v manage so let's suppose you have around 4000 van routers in that case what people is recommended or what cisco is recommended you need two v manage okay let's suppose if you have around 12000 
when is routers in that case you need around six v manage because one me we manage is only able to manage around 2000 devices and guys on a cluster as well this is the maximum limit of your cluster you can only able to put six v manage in a cluster guys and v manage is a virtual appliance means it is available only on vm basically so two images type we have a like when we download the images of your v manager from the cisco portal you will get the ova image for exe environment and you will get the qcow2 image for kvm environment we can deploy v manager on your exe environment openstack azure aws and gcp cloud platforms just guys see this line your v manager is a significantly resource intensive and most of the customer go with the cloud options because your v manager or this controller is the resource intensive controller even though guys when i will run this particular control on my lab it needs minimum 16 gb of ram one controller only we manage other control like we smart we is they will take very less like 2 gb of ram but we manage it take lots of ram sometime we can also take the cisco managed cloud for we manage deployment guys and other controller hosting so we can host these controllers on a cisco cloud this is also a recommended way guys so this is all about your we manage controller guys now let me just discuss regarding the next controller which is your v smart controller v smart controller basically facilitate your control plane activities in your fabric basically so v smart offers the control plane functionalities v smart controller are the brain of your overlay fabric guys why it is brain because it is handling the control plane all the routing updates it will send now guys let me just tell you one thing here i will not go on depth for that for now guys these v smart basically what they will do how these particular routers your wan is routers how they will basically sends the routing updates how they will basically exchange the information with each other guys so they will exchange that information with each each other with the help of there is a one protocol is known as overlay management protocol they will basically create the omp peering guys overlay management protocol or omp protocol is similar to your bgp protocol guys it is almost similar to bgp protocol so in your sd wan fabric overlay management protocol runs guys if somebody ask in your interview you can just simply tell your v smart and all your v edges or wan edges they will basically create the omp peering with the v smart and they will exchange the routing information your crypto keys information everything as a omp updates guys okay v smart kind of brain of the your overlay fabric now it's a virtual appliance we can spin on aws azure cisco and exe environment so guys for v smart it is also virtual appliance we are having it supports active active cluster guys what it will support the active active cluster basically means which means if you have here three v smarts they all are active basically any one can sends the updates to these particular wan is routers if there is any change on the routing okay it distribute the control plane information which includes your routing or your routes or prefix information and your crypto keys what is these routes information so guys if i'll say here if you will see this thing so if you will see these subnets if you will see these subnets these are the lan subnets right 
our main focus of this particular sd wan solution is to basically advertise these subnets so what they will do this wan as router what it will update these subnets to your v smart this router will not update the subnet directly here no all these routers they will just update the routes information to be smart now it's a job of be smart to further update the routing information which means your india when is device it will update these routes information to vs sorry to your v smart now v smart basically update this particular routes to your dubai router and your london when is routers similar thing if these dubai routers they will update this particular subnet details to be smart and now be smart will update these details to your head office when is router and your london office when is routers how they will update they will use the overlay management protocol for that omp protocol okay cool no it distribute the data plane and control plane policies guys what is the policies so let me just connect my charger okay cool so it distribute the data plane and control plane policies to the wan is routers which means if you want to do the traffic engineering guys so let me go here as well let me decrease the size little bit okay cool so what it will do it will basically distribute your control plane policies basically what do you mean by the policy let's suppose there is a one requirement you have in this topology what do you want you want all your traffic from these devices let's suppose if the, this this anyone from this network anyone from this network wants to communicate with this network what you want that traffic will not go directly to this one i don't want this what i want i want if they wants to communicate with this that traffic first go to your head office then it will came back and after it will go here means i let's suppose i want how any spoke kind of environment here means all my branch office are the spoke and i have a head office as a hub network means all the trans all the traffic from these branch office they will send to the head office and now head office will further distribute the traffic if you want such kind of things by default what happens by default basically they will create a full mesh topology full mesh means this router will create a ipsec tunnel with this one this will create ipsec here means full each routers will create ipsec tunnel from each transport this is the default behavior and they can communicate directly with each other but if you want if you want to change this default behavior how you will change you will only able to change with the help of these control policies so who will take care of that part your v smart your control plane it will it is the device who will take care of all these things it creates the omp peering with vs devices and it will distribute the routing information it is also known as a bgp route refractor or dmbpn nhrp routers what is this bgp route ref reflector what is the concept of route re reflector guys so in bgp route reflector what used to happen let's suppose we have this setup like this or let me just go in here as well so if i have this topology so guys when this when is it will send these routes details to my v smart it will not by default send these routing information to any of these devices it will not send 
we have to basically do the configuration which means all your van devices they will basically send the routing information to your v smart that's why it's become the route reflector and now this device will further send the routing details basically okay now let's see what is the next point i am having dtls tunnels formed between v smart and v bond and v manage and vanishes device so guys this point i will discuss when we discuss your control plane in details okay but just remember guys one thing according to this topology just remember your v manage and your v smart your v manage and your v bond your v smart and your v bond they will create a tunnel with each other for sending the data securely your van is routers basically they will create a tunnel with v smart with v manage with v bond what type of tunnel it is your tls or dtls tunnel it's just a, if i'll say in a simple word it is your ssl tunnel they will create a dtls tunnel dtls is a by default tunnel what is the difference between tls and dtls guys anyone know can you just write on a chat what is the difference between tls and dtls so your tls is based on tcp and your dtls is based on udp and by default they will create a dtls tunnel for communicating securely with each other with each other because you know this this traffic when your v smart they will communicate with your when is divided your traffic is also going through the internet and your these public internet cloud and all right anyone can see the information if you will not encrypt the traffic so these they will create these tunnels tls and dt don't worry we will discuss this thing in some other class because it's i have to discuss so many things on that how they will create a tunnel right so many things are there guys okay cool now let me just go here or uh, let me just see something so i think you will get the everything here what it will do it facilitate the fabric discovery which means what it will do it is the device who will basically update the routes to all your van edges when it will update the routes to van is which means each van is routers have the routes for other van is which means it will do it will help you in the fabric discovery it will take care of your control plane activities basically it will distribute the data plane and application of your routing policies to the van is device many all the policies distribution is also done by the control plane which is your v smart device it implement the control plane policies so with the help of basically this v smart device what it has reduced the complexity of your control plane because in your traditional van environment we have these problems right this problem is completely solved and highly resilient which means we have to go with the deployment of these devices in a cluster basically we always go with the cluster deployment for your v smart devices so this is all about your v smart device guys now there's a one more device is left let me just go with that and that device is everyone know is known as your orchestration plane which is also known as v1 device guys so what v1 will take care of it is it will take care of the orchestration plane activities basically you have a v1 here now guys let me just tell you one thing if you are using biptela edge device the virtual appliance 
which means that image is the same image for v1 so v1 and your v is image of your virtual appliance is similar guys we can use same image for the v1 why we use v1 we will use v1 one for the authentication purpose what do you mean by the authentication purpose guys whenever your when is devices these devices they came online when they came online what they will do first to join your fabric what they will do they will always communicate with the b1 device first they will communicate with the b bond and they will basically present the serial number they will present the chassis number because every device have a serial number and chassis number right when you will purchase the devices you will get the serial number and chassis number they will present the serial number and chassis number and the certificate and they will communicate to the b bond now what we won't have so in this b bond what we have we have the details of all your vanish devices whenever you will purchase any device from cisco right you can able to see all these devices information into the cisco support portal right with the serial number and all so all this information what we have to upload into the v1 device which means your v1 have list of all the vanish device if you have a 10000 vanish devices here which means it has a details of 10000 devices it has the serial number and chassis number as well so when they will send the chassis number serial number what this device will do it will authenticate them it will whitelist them and what it will do it will also provide two things it will provide the ip address or we can say information of your v manager and it will provide the information of your v smart to these devices how these devices they will communicate with b bond they will use the dtls connection now who will basically configure the b bond information on these devices so we can do it manually otherwise cisco have some solution is known as jttp and plug and play so i will discuss regarding this solution and some different class guys how this jttp or plug and play works and always remember guys one thing this particular controller should have a public ip address means this part controller is publicly reachable because let's suppose these vanish devices they wants to communicate through the internet how they will able to reach till this b bond so that b bond should have a public ip address basically if in the organization where you your v1 is behind some router and all you don't in that case what you can configure the one to one net as well means you can configure the one to one net as well so if you will see here it is a first point of contact basically all your van is devices when they will they wants to join the fabric they will basically contact with the v bond and they will basically authenticate themselves with the b bond and after that b bond it will distribute the list of v smart or v manage to all the van is devices who just got authenticated means it will give the ip address of your v v smart and v managers and also it will inform to your v manager and v smart this is the device which is successfully authenticated now you may receive a connection or you may receive a dtls connection request from that device it will inform to these devices as well it is highly resilient which means resilient which means for the high availability purpose we always go with the at least to be bound or three be bound deployment so if one device is failed we have an another device who can do the 
who will take care of that when is traffic or when is authentication we can also deploy on a multi tenant or a single tenant mode this b won't controller guys so this is all about your v1 control let me just see i have also written some extra point here on my notepad so let me also go through with that so it offers the orchestration plane which means it is also known as a security plane so it will take care of the orchestration plane functionality means it will take care of the authentication of your when is routers it's a virtual appliance we can spin this particular vm of we want on aws azure cisco exi environment basically it authenticates v is devices using the certificate serial number or i can say here let me add here chassis number as well and it will whitelist them after that here mutual authentication have so guys also there's a one more thing to remember there is a mutual authentication is also happens between we manage we smart and we bond guys they will also authenticate each other guys it is responsible for distribution of we manage and we smart information to your vanish devices it has to be public publicly reachable means it will have a public ip address if it is not having the public ip address in that case we have to do the one to one net or we can go with the static net if we want ip address is a private ip address which means let's suppose this is my we want if i have a private ip address here what i can do i can do the one to one net on this particular router okay we want and we has used the same software operating system or same osmas it is a first point of contact or authentication will take care it will authenticate all the vanish devices it facilitate the net traversal guys what's that i am just give you brief about it so let's suppose this particular vanish let's suppose this vanish having the private ip address and this is my firewall here i have configured the port address translation means right now my vanish device is behind the net device behind the net device if i have this so which means how my now it's a job of b bond what it will do it will detect these vanish devices they are having they are publicly reachable or they are basically behind some kind of net device this is the job of your we want controller guys okay it will take care of the net traversal things it supports clustering and high availability it can be deployed in multi tenant or single tenant mode so this is guys all about your controllers of your st1 now let's discuss the hosting of these particular controllers where we can deploy what are the deployment options we are having for these controllers so all controllers we can deploy on cloud and on premises so we have a both options here cloud deployment can significantly improve the overall availability and redundancy of your management plane and control plane why if you will deploy these controllers on the cloud and you want to scale up the resources you can able to do it easily so that kind of benefits you will get you can consume the management and control plane as as a infrastructure as a service or even you can also get the software as a service so both ias and sas both options is available if you want to utilize them you can utilize both the options people is basically prefer this particular option says software as a service in on prem deployment we need to take care of the rack space power cooling physical servers hypervisor and your 
virtual machine and containers, right? All these kind of activities, we have to do it by ourselves. And we also need to take care of the redundancy and backup. If we will deploy these controllers in on-prem. In on-prem, we can deploy either using EXI server or which is a vSphere and we can use the KVM as well. In cloud, we have a AWS, Microsoft, Azure, GCP, Cisco controller as a service. So these are the cloud options we have. Cisco offers the following options to the customer. Cisco hosted cloud. So your 90% customer uses the Cisco hosted controllers basically. And Cisco take care of the provisioning all controllers. They handle the backup and disaster recovery of these controllers if anything happens. In this, customer are going with the software as a service by using the vManage to create the custom configuration templates for their devices and administrator the overlay fabric basically. So you can go with the software as a service as well where Cisco will do everything for you. They will basically create the configuration for your sites. They will manage. If you go with the infrastructure as a service, they will give you the controllers. Now you have to write the policies. You have to do the configuration of everything by yourself. Now guys, if I'll give you the example. So like this Biptela company, it is started by the three peoples. They are from the Pakistan. And after a few years, they have worked, these three people, they have worked together. And after that, what they have involved two more people from India, and they have basically created this Viptela company. And what Cisco have basically acquired this company and Cisco have basically what they have done. Cisco have changed the previously that solution is known as a Viptela SD-WAN solution. Now it is a Cisco SD-WAN solution. So we have a Viptela SD-WAN solution, then Cisco acquired Viptela. So it's become Cisco Viptela SD-WAN. Now it is totally a Cisco SD-WAN solution. You, in your Viptela, you have a dedicated physical WAN routers of Viptela. Okay, and you do have a Cisco routers as well. So we have discussed the management plane, data plane, we have a discuss your management plane, control plane, and orchestration plane. Now let me just quickly discuss your data plane as well, guys. So in your data plane, basically your van is devices come. These devices, this is your data plane. So if I'll go down here. Now, if I'll say these devices, basically, come on, let me just decrease the size here. I hope this image is visible, right? Cool. So if you will see these devices, basically, these devices comes under the data plane now here. What type of devices you will see? You will see the VS devices, which is known as Viptela WAN S devices. And you will see the CS devices, which is known as Cisco WAN S devices, basically. So in your data plane, we have a WAN S routers. They provide the secure data plane with the remote VS router. So guys, what they will do, your IPsec tunnels build between these particular WAN is devices, your IPsec tunnel between, build between them and your all the traffic of users, which is behind these routers is go through this particular IPsec tunnel. With your, all your VS devices, whatever connection they will make with your V, V man is V wound or V smart. This connection is your DTLS connection or TLS connection. Whatever connection they will make, your van is device will make with another van, it is your IP sector now or your IP sec connection. Establish the secure control plane with V smart controller. 
with the help of OMP, enforce policy for the data plane and apply and apply aware routing. So all these policies we will configure onto these devices basically. They will export the performance statics to your VMANAGE via SNMP protocol. Via SNMP protocol. They will lib leverage the traditional routing protocol like OSP, BGP, and VRRP. These type of protocols we can run on these devices. They support zero touch provisioning, and they are available on both the form physical form factor and virtual form factor. Your virtual devices, guys, they just provide you the 10 Mbps of throughput. And if you need a higher throughput, you always go with the physical devices guys here now in the if i'll explain you the list of physical devices in your van is we have a vs 100 this is the series vs 1000 series vs 2000 series vs 5000 series and we have a vs cloud and that cloud we will use this is a virtual image basically then we have a c is in CS, it is running your iOS XC and SD WAN code. Basically, we have a ISR series routers, ISR 11 series, and ISR 4000 series. They are the CS routers. We have a ASR 1000 series, and now we have a CAT 8K routers as well, and we have a CSR 1000V as well. So these are the Cisco Venice devices, basically. So we can use ISR, ASR, CAT 8 and your CSR devices. That's based, that's about your data plane. If you want, you can see the details here. When is routers, they are handling the user's data, so they comes under data plane. They are having both virtual and physical images. Virtual, we use only for lab purpose or testing purpose because its throughput is very less. In production, we always use the physical appliances. They provide the secure data plane connection with the remote when is routers. We can configure the traditional routing protocol like OSPF, BGP. So guys, just remember here, we have one hack. Your OSPF and BGP is supported by the when is routers only. If I'll say EIGRP, your EIGRP BGP and OSPF is supported by your CS routers. So because EIGRP was a Cisco proprietary protocols and they have not added that particular EIGRP functionality on your Biptela as devices still, okay? When is routers communicate securely with vSmart using OMP protocol to set up the data flow. Implements the data plane and application aware routing policies they support traditional routing protocols and they support JetTP and PMP, guys. So this is the thing which I want to cover, guys, with regards to today's lecture. Now, these things we will see in your next class or this, I will start from hosting because in hosting also, I have to tell lots of other options, guys. Okay, so maybe we will see in your next class.